Well, howdy ho, my peeps. In case you ever wondered what I stare at when I'm lying in bed for four days with a cold, well, you're looking at it. I stare at my ceiling with my Romex wire that will someday be supporting a beautiful chandelier. God, isn't that sad? I'll lie here and I'll look up there at that um, OSB and I will find animal faces. Okay, so let's find some animal faces, you guys. Let's see here. Oops, that was my finger. Gosh darn it, what did I do? Okay, let's find some animal faces. Let's see. Okay, so um, let's see. I see a cat. Let's see. I'll put the cat right... Okay, there it is. I see a cat. Do you see the little cat right center? Right in the center? Okay, let's find something else. Um, all right. So now right in the center, I see a moose with its antlers and its big, huge nose. All right. What else can we find in here? I mean, I can lie here and I can find animal faces. Okay, I see a rabbit. I just put that center screen. It looks like a rabbit. I don't know. I keep myself occupied doing this. Um, alrighty, let's see. I'm going to turn this around. Um, okay, so this is, I hope you can see me. This is day four of being in bed with my cold. Um, although I have to say that I've rounded the corner. I am, the cold's going away, finally, and I'm going to get up here pretty quick. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to um, put on some clean clothes, and then my kid is coming over with one of his friends, and they are going to help finish burning, uh, building our burn pile for this year. I don't know that we're even going to be able to burn this year because the... Um, it is so dry. There's no humidity. It is just, it is, it is dusty dry here in Central California. Well, all of California. And I don't know when we're going to have a burn day. I mean, you have to have several days of rain before they release and let you do your, you know, your hazardous materials burn, not hazardous material, but you know, where you have to, you have to clear back a hundred feet from your property and they allow you to make a pile and burn that. So if, you know, we're doing that, but, um, um, <clears throat> I don't know if, not when enough rain is going to get here, that's going to allow us to do it, not in the foreseeable future. And in part, that's because there's this big goddamn high pressure system sitting out off the coast of California and it's getting bigger and bigger and it's keeping all the weather off into the Pacific and it's not allowing us to have any, you know, any precipitation come in. So, um, it's scary. I mean, it's, it is bright sunshine, um, shirt sleeve weather out there. It's like an early fall day or a spring day. I mean, it's just as warm and beautiful as it can be. And, you know, sometimes it's the beautiful things that are the most scary. And right now, a beautiful day in Central California is a very scary thing. Um, but, so what have I done today? Well, I got up and I got some tea with honey in it. And I sat on the edge of my bed and I answered all of the comments from my last video. Now, as you guys have noticed, those of you who have been following me, there are videos where I haven't answered one damn comment and then other videos where I'll answer all of them because I've just been so sporadic. So I figured as a gift back to you guys, since you've gifted me with your comments, I've turned around and gifted you back with my answers. So if you if you look at my brow video, I did answer everybody's comments, at least as of this morning. And um, one of the comments... Um, uh, I think it was Mindy. I, I can't remember. I think it was Mindy who was telling me about how um, her mother, when she was younger, had been had been lighting a stove and 
you know how sometimes the gas will build up. You turn on the gas for the stove and then you have to look for the match. And by the time you light it, it goes ba woof. Well, it did that. It went ba woof and it singed off all her mother's eyebrows and they never grew back. Well, that reminded me of a story. I don't know if I've told this um, on uh, YouTube yet. I asked Prudy Fox if she'd heard me tell this and she said she hasn't. So here we go. I've got a story about my father who did the same damn thing. Okay, so this was back in the 1980s. My dad was an iconoclast. I mean, if he could get away with breaking the law or getting around some regulation, he would do it. And this would be my minor things. I mean, he didn't knock over banks or anything, but, you know, one thing he would like to, he liked to do was get around regulations that had to do with his land and his place where we lived. So one thing he decided was that he was no longer going longer gonna to pay for garbage service. He felt like he shouldn't have to pay for garbage service. So <laughs> he hires this guy, this tree service to come out and they had these big, huge augers. They were like 15 feet across and went 15 feet down into the ground. They were huge. And he had this guy sink, I don't know, maybe five big, huge, monstrous, dangerous holes in his back pasture. And so he decided he was going to fill those up with garbage. Well, I don't know how long it took him, at least a year to get one of these holes filled up all the way to the top. And he threw everything in there. Paper, plastic, cans, wet garbage, furniture, televisions. I mean, everything went into this hole, right? So it finally gets up to the top and, and, and it come up over the top a little bit. And he decided, well, it's time to, to deal with that. So <laughs> he gets a five-gallon tank, you know, container of gasoline. And he pours the gasoline around the perimeter and he's splashing it up onto the top where the stuff was overflowing and he's pouring it around the perimeter just having a great old time. And my son, my oldest son, was standing there watching him do this. And he says, uh, the grandpa he says, what are you planning on doing? My dad says, well, you know, we're going to we're going to go ahead and burn this garbage. My son, who was about seven at the time or maybe six, he says, you know, big grandpa, he says, that's not going to burn. He says, that's going to explode. My dad said, oh, no, no, we're going to get a nice fire going on the top and it's just going to work its way down into the hole and pretty soon it'll all be burned down and we can fill it up again. My son, he's backing away a step at a time. He's telling my dad, you know, I don't think it works that way, big grandpa. He says, I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> he keeps backing up. My dad lights a match, throws it in. Nothing happens. So he lights another match, throws that in. Nothing happens. So he walks over to the edge of this hole that was now full of stuff. And he looks over and Chris just had enough time to say, big grandpa, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And the whole thing went up. Chris said that it, it exploded like a bomb. It went up into the air and it still had its cylindrical shape. All the crap went up into the air and then it had like, some hang time, right? A second or two and it was just hanging in the air and then it all went back down into the hole. Ba whoosh. Chris said the flames went out for, you know, 15 feet probably. <laughs> it made this huge explosion. By this time, my dad had began to, you know, back up and he got all the hair on the front of his head was singed off. His eyebrows were singed off. He looked like he had the worst sunburn ever. <laughs> and it's, he's running around trying to figure out what the hell to do. And this pile is, you know, burning and flaming and sending off embers everywhere. And my kid's back there in the background. He says, Grandpa, I told you not to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see this happen, 
only my son saw it, and he ran inside and told me. And by this time, we would seen the flames, and we were running outside. And, you know, somebody called nine one one, and <laughs> and my son told me the whole story about how this thing came up out of the air and then went whoosh and sent flames everywhere. And luckily, luckily, my dad did this in the middle of a two acre um, pasture that had. It was in the winter, so there was nothing around there that was going to really go up in flames. Luckily, he didn't do it toward the edge of the property where all of the eucalyptus trees were. Because if he had, those suckers would have gone up like torches, you know, just all around the, all around the perimeter of the yard. You would have seen one go up, ba whoosh, and then the next one, ba whoosh, all the way around. <laughs> So we were lucky that the placement of where he decided to put this bomb was, you know, not too dangerous. So anyway, that reminded her, her story reminded me of that. And I don't think I had told you guys. If I had, sorry. I'm getting to be one of those old ladies who tells the same old family story over time after time after time. So forgive me if I've already told this story. But I thought that was really funny. <laughs> My dad. <laughs> crazy and then one time they had a hole that was still open they had thrown some stuff down in it but it was still open and my dad was throwing stuff into this hole and he looks over and he sees a skunk a big old skunk was down on the bottom of this hole 15 feet down my dad couldn't figure out how it got down there and didn't know how it was going to get back out so they called the SPCA, and the SPCA said, well, you have a skunk in a hole. There's nothing we can do. So then he called, I don't know, somebody else, I, I don't know, Department of Fish and Game or something like that. And they said, well, yeah, you got a skunk in a hole. There's nothing we can do. So he and my mom thought about it, and they thought, you know, maybe if we put a ladder down in the hole, and then we throw some brush on top of the ladder, and we'll give the skunk a way to get climb up out of the hole and get out. So they did that, and they checked. The next day, the stump was still in the hole. Well, a couple of days later, it was gone, so they figured that it actually used the ladder. But the funny thing is, is this was all going on during the OJ trial, and so my parents named the skunk Shapiro. <laughs> Because they thought it looked like the the pro I think what is it the prosecutor I think it was I don't know if it was the defense attorney whoever it was he had that kind of skunk like hair so <laughs> so my 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 parents gave Shapiro a pardon and let him climb up out of that hole <laughs> oh man so many stories he finally had the holes filled in though so. He had somebody come out and fill him in with dirt because it was so dangerous. I mean, you know, if a skunk could fall in and be there, somebody's kid could have fallen in there. You know, livestock or who the hell. He could have been wandering around in the back pasture drunk and fallen in and nobody would have found him until he was dead from exposure. So I think he figured out it was a pretty good idea to fill those holes back in after the tragedy of Shapiro. So that's all I have to say today. I think I'm going to get up out of this bed. I'm going to make myself some more tea. And I'm going to see if I can be upright for the rest of the day. I hope you guys are all doing well. And I will talk to you later. Bye!